Hello and welcome to this TI Precisions Lab video on trapezoidal commutation of brushless DC motors. In this video, we'll discuss how a BLDC motor is commutated using trapezoidal commutation, the benefits and disadvantages of this method, and how it's implemented using censored and sensorless techniques. Let's begin by refreshing the basics of spinning a BLDC motor. BLDC motors consist of a rotor and stator where the stator is made up of coil windings that act as electromagnets when current is injected into them and the rotor is a permanent magnet that reacts to the magnetic fields generated by the stator. The process of exciting these windings needs to be done in a controlled fashion which is where motor driver electronics come into play. The coil windings in the stator will turn on in a specific manner which will pull the rotor, essentially making the rotor chase the magnetic fields created by the stator. The process of switching on and off the current applied to these phase windings in the stator to generate motion is called motor commutation. In this diagram, we see three phase windings in the stator. As current moves from one phase pole of the stator winding to the other, the magnetic field produced pulls the rotor in its direction based on its polarity. This will cause the motor to spin. When the motor spins, it generates a counter electromotive force or voltage that opposes the change in current which induced it. This back EMF waveform can be trapezoidal or sinusoidal in shape, depending on motor construction. To maximize performance, the drive current should match the back EMF waveform. Typical BLDC motors are wound in a trapezoidal manner, which will theoretically produce a trapezoidal back EMF waveform. However, inductance in the motor smooths the back EMF into a slightly sinusoidal shape. Because of this, BLDC motors can be commutated using both trapezoidal and sinusoidal commutation. In order to commutate efficiently, the motor's position needs to be known so that the phase currents can be turned on in sequence accordingly. This can be done using censored or sensorless techniques. Trapezoidal commutation is popular because of its simplicity, low cost, and reliability. It's the easiest commutation technique to implement compared to sinusoidal and field-oriented control. Its simplicity reduces design time and cost, especially in terms of processing power used for the control algorithms. It's very common in high-speed applications or applications where a high starting torque is required, such as in power tools, vacuums, drones, and others. However, it does suffer from torque ripple problems. Another drawback is the electrical and acoustic noise produced, mostly coming from the rapidly switching direct current powering the individual phases. This noise can heat up the windings and reduce efficiency, while also creating an audible acoustic buzz caused by the switching frequency. Trapezoidal commutation occurs in six steps, which is why it is often called six-step commutation. Each motor phase terminal is energized by direct current which is electrically switched every 60 degrees of rotation so that the current space vector is continuously within the nearest 30 degrees of the quadrature direction. As a result, the waveform to each phase winding is a staircase with a 60 degree window for each step, starting with zero, then going to a positive current state, back to zero, and then to a negative current state. The space vector produced from all three phase currents results in smooth rotation as it commutates through the six steps. In principle, we are trying to produce the highest torque in a BLDC motor by energizing the correct phase pair in sequence to produce a smooth constant torque. In practice, we cannot instantaneously change the phase current from low to high. There will be transient periods of rise and fall times that will generate ripples at the output which will coincide with each phase switch. This causes a ripple in the motor's output torque. The entire commutation process can be seen in action on the right. The power stage transistor switch in sequence to commutate the motor. Each half bridge has one side activated at a time with appropriate dead time inserted to avoid shoot through, which can cause serious damage to the system. As each FET is switched on, current is injected in each motor terminal depending on the rotor's position. The motor's position can be determined by using sensor techniques such as Hall sensors or by sensorless techniques such as back EMF voltage measurements. In order for the control scheme to be efficiently implemented, the position of the motor must be known at all times. 
A popular sensor technique is using Hall effect sensors to feed information back to the controller. Hall effect sensors measure the magnetic fields produced by the permanent magnet on the rotor. As the permanent magnet of the rotor changes position from north to south, the output of the Hall sensor changes states. In order for this to work properly, the Hall sensor must be installed in specific locations. A single Hall sensor can distinguish the electrical cycle into two parts. This leads to three Hall sensors being used to know all six positions of the electrical cycle. The Hall devices embedded within the motor measure the position of the rotor within 60 degree sectors and sends a digital signal to the motor controller. As mentioned previously, in six step commutation at any point in time, two windings will be equal in magnitude while the third will be zero, resulting in current space vectors of six different directions. We can observe an example of how Hall effect sensors detect the magnetic field from the motor during each of the six states of the electrical cycle. As one pole of the rotor passes through a Hall sensor, it produces either a high or low state based on the configuration. When the opposite pole passes through the Hall sensor, it generates the opposite state. The three sensors doing this all at once will produce six states which can be referred to using a truth table. The truth table shown shows the states of each Hall sensor based on the rotor position. Based on the values of each Hall sensor for each step, the controller automatically knows which phase windings to energize. The result is continuous commutation using Hall sensors. With Hall sensors, motor position is known immediately, even while the motor is spinning slowly or at a standstill. Other types of sensor techniques include the use of encoders and resolvers. In many motor applications, such as HVAC and major appliances, the use of Hall effect sensors is not a cost-effective solution for position detection, leading to sensorless methods being implemented. Sensorless methods can eliminate physical sensors by using the motor's back EMF voltage to detect motor position. According to Faraday's law, the EMF voltage is generated when a wire moves through a magnetic field. As the rotor turns, a back EMF waveform is generated from each coil winding, which can be used to detect position. This method is normally implemented for pumps, fans, and similar applications with low torque variety at startup and normal operation. This solution reduces cost and increases reliability by getting rid of external components. Its disadvantage is that it has poor, low speed, and stall condition torque stability. To implement back EMF measurements, a 60 degree window will be applied on the undriven face coil and a comparator is used to detect the zero crossings, which is equivalent to a signal change in a Hall sensor. While one coil is positively energized and another is negatively energized, the comparator can then compare the back EMF on the open coil to half the DC bus voltage. Once it detects a zero crossing, it will index the energizing sequence to the next step. Another method is to implement analog to digital converters, which will sample the voltage and compare it to the digital value corresponding to the zero point. During trapezoidal commutation of a BLDC motor, the motor back EMF will change polarity and amplitude as it spins. Because the back EMF is proportional to speed, the back EMF waveform will have a low amplitude at startup and slow speeds, making it hard to detect zero crossings. A common solution is for the motor to spin in open loop mode until sufficient speed produces enough back EMF for measurement. Advanced techniques such as initial position detection, or IPD, and rotor align can be used to find the initial position at startup without continuous motion. IPD is used to detect initial position while the motor is at a standstill. Rotor align aligns the rotor to a known position before it starts to commutate oftentimes causing reverse rotation on startup. More information on these technologies will be available in future trainings. To find more motor driver technical resources and search products, visit ti.com slash motor drivers.